welcome back guys. Uh, today I thought I'd take a look at um, Mantix 16, the new Beta 5 that was released a few days ago. So I downloaded it and installed it and actually I've installed it probably five or six times uh, experimenting with different configurations and I wanted to start from scratch each time uh, just so I understood what exactly was happening. <coughs> um, so let me go through some of the things now I I made some notes because there is a um, sequence that I believe you should follow when it, when you install especially uh, Antix um, because you need you'll need to configure some items and I I'm gonna show you uh, how to figure those things out a little bit easier um, based on my trial and error first of all when you install Antix 16 uh, beta it gives you the option at the beginning of the install to select either Debian Jesse, Debian testing or Debian Sid. Once you make your selection and you continue with the install it configures the sources list accordingly. Now I installed stable and so I'm working from the stable install. Uh, you can go ahead and install testing uh, if you want, for example, later NVIDIA drivers. The stable will give you the 340 driver. The testing will give you the 352 driver. Um, so it depends on what you need. Uh, I only wanted the, the uh, 340. That was fine for me. And so... Um, I went with stable. So I'm working from a stable install. Uh, the first thing I want to do is let's open up uh, Synaptic Package Manager and take a look at our sources list as it stands right now. Now this will only take a minute. <clears throat> okay, so you, as you can see, I've only got a few things enabled. I've got the uh, Antic server, which is uh, enabled by default and in the uh, Jesse you get the Antic server the US Debian dot org uh, repo and the security update repo those are the only three that are enabled <coughs> now we're gonna do some more work on that in a, in a minute or two but let's just close that out so we understand what we have there the first thing that I recommend that you do is run NetSelect apps. Now I did a video on this uh, a while back, but I'm going to go through that with you. Now I, I'm connected by Ethernet right now, so I do have access to the internet. So let's uh, do sudo apt get update just to update the system. And then we'll, we'll do sudo install app get install net select app and I apologize this video is probably going to be a little bit long because I have a lot to cover and I want to explain each step as we go so sudo app get install net select app so <coughs> now that I have that installed I'm going to run it now you'll follow the directions I'm going to put these in the show notes you'll follow the directions for the in terminal you can see I installed it and now I'm going to run it so it's sudo net select app stable now if you don't put anything it's going to adhere to your sources list if you don't put stable um, you can put stable if you're running stable you can put testing if you're running stable but again if you just leave it sudo net select app it will uh, run according to your, your current sources list so now it's going through all of the Debian sources and it's going to identify the fastest <coughs> once it does that it will copy a new sources list to my home folder. 
then it's up to me to determine whether I want to make the change in my uh, s sources list. So let's take a look at what it recommends. It's only going to take a, a moment. Usually it's pretty fast. So it'll write a new sources list in. Now you can see here it says no valid servers were found that could be reachable. The fastest 10. Um, NetSelect found these hosts to be closest to you, but we could not connect to any of them using that protocol. So I'm not sure why that is, uh, because it is pulling in from this, ftpusdebian.org. So we're going to, we could uh, change it to advanced hosters, but uh, since it wasn't able to connect to any of them, I'm going to leave that alone right now. We're going to run this again later. So let's just uh, forget about that for now. Okay, the item number two, we're going to go back into Synaptic and we're going to enable Deb Multimedia. And let's put a check mark under Deb Multimedia, but for our uh, Jesse. Okay, you see that? There's a Deb Multimedia Jesse and testing. We don't want the testing because we're not running testing. We want Jesse. So we're going to click OK and we're going to reload. And we're going now we're going to enable. Now, if you have a 64 bit install like I do, you'll want to uh, enable 32 bit architecture. So in terminal, I am going to copy and paste this command. sudo dpackage add architecture. So i386 is 32 bit. We're going to add that. And that's done. Now we're going to do sudo app get update <coughs> just so we can update our uh, available packages to our sources list. And that won't take long. Okay, so we're going to leave that alone right now. Okay, so now we're going to come back to NetSelect app. We did dead multimedia. We enable 32-bit. Let's go to the control center. Now, Antix has done a great job with, con with the control center. We're just going to do a couple things. We're going to go to network. And we're going to enable Wi-Fi. Now I have a dongle plugged in. Let's see if it identifies any networks. And it did. So it picked up my Wi-Fi dongle. Now, um, it, when I installed this on my main computer with my Broadcom Wi-Fi, it already configured Broadcom out of the box, which doesn't happen too often. So, so big, big kudos and... Um, thumbs up to Antix uh, and also MX-15. They are one of the few distributions that recognize Broadcom out of the box and configure it properly. So I'm going to connect to my network. I'll click connect. It's going to tell me that it requires a uh, password. So I'm going to enter my password and I'll click OK, and then I'm going to click Connect again. So now it'll connect, it puts the interface up, it validates my password, gets an IP address, and I am connected. That's, that's how easy Antix makes Wi-Fi um, configuration. Super, super. Really good. All right, so we're going to close that out because we are connected to Wi-Fi. Now we are going to set our sound card. So let's see, system, session, hardware. Okay, so let's set our default sound card. Now it's picking up the, the, act, the, the correct default. So I'm gonna click okay, and I'm gonna front, test it. left, <coughs> front, right, front, left, front, right. Now I'm not sure if you heard that, but it came through without any issues. 
Now, I am not going to click on set up a printer because my brother printer is connected wirelessly and I'm not sure it's going to be able to pick it up. So we'll come back and see if, if that works. Okay, so we've got our, our Wi-Fi and sound card. Let's go back to network and configure our firewall. We're going to click unlock and then we're going to click on and our firewall is enabled. Now it's enabled according to the default um, configuration and that's fine. So let's close that out. And non-free codecs, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the system, click on Meta Package Installer, and down here, non-free, you're gonna click on Install Non-Free, and then go down to non-free, click on Video Codecs, and click on Install. Now you want to make sure you enabled Dev Multimedia prior to that so that you can pull in all of the codecs, including those that are available through Dev Multimedia. So now it's just a matter of finishing the uh, install and it is done. We can, we can uh, hit, hit Alt F4 and it'll close that window and we're going to close out the meta installer. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Now, in order to configure our NVIDIA card, you've got a couple of issues. Very, It's very easy to do. Let me open up a terminal and we'll do it together. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste this because you need to install NVIDIA Driver, NVIDIA X Config, and NVIDIA Settings. Those three are crucial. So I'm going to hit Enter. <coughs> It'll go through and identify all of the uh, dependencies. It will install. It's going to give me a couple of messages uh, letting me know that I need to run uh, NVIDIA X config, but it'll only take a moment and we'll be done. Then I'm going to reboot and, uh, well, I'll probably do a couple of things before rebooting just so we can go back to the uh, meta package installer. Now you can see it says there's a conflicting a Nuvo kernel loaded. So the easiest way is to reboot the machine once the installation has finished. That's not 100% true. Because you'll see that sudo, uh, the, the driver is not configured yet. It needs to be enabled in xorg.conf before it can be used. So that's why we needed the um, NVIDIA, NVIDIA X config. So we'll hit OK there. It will go ahead and finish up. OK. So now we're going to run NVIDIA X config. And I believe that needs to be root. So let me add that to this so that the show notes are correct. Okay. So now sudo NVIDIA X config. Okay. So it wrote the configuration to the proper file. When I reboot, I will be within, uh, I'll be running the NVIDIA and we'll, we'll go through that in a moment. The next thing I want to do is if you want OBS Studio, you will need to enable the MX15 repos in Synaptic Package Manager. Okay. So if I run sudo apt get install OBS Studio, it's going to tell me it can't find that package. 
but there is a way to install it and we would have to enable the MX-15 repos. Let me show you what's involved. Now if I pull up my sources as I did before you will see here the MX repos. There are two lines here as you can see. There's the, the MX repo and there's the tech. We would need both. So you would have to click on both. Click OK. Reload. And then it, once you run the the uh, command to install OBS Studio, it would find it. So I'm not going to do that right now. I don't want to uh, mess with my system. I am going to uncheck those. Reload. And it'll be reloading according to the original configuration with dev multimedia added. So when that's done, I'm going to close that out. Now, one more thing I want to find out is, can I install Cody? Cody was not listed in the control center for the Mega Installer. So if I go to Meta Package Installer, uh, Cody was not listed. Uh, there were quite a few things listed, but not Cody. So I'm going to see, I'm going to close that out for a second, and I'm going to see if I can install Cody. Now it should install because I have non-free codecs enabled and I have dev multimedia enabled. So it should be able to find it. And it did. So we'll let it go and install and we'll check it once it's done it shouldn't take long once it's done we will check it in the menu and then i'm going to reboot and come back and make sure that my nvidia card is enabled and that everything looks correct so let's see if cody is in our sound and video menu and it is okay so I'm going to pause the video here, guys, and then I'll come back once I've rebooted to see if NVIDIA is configured correctly. Be right back. Welcome back, guys. So I have rebooted, and um, visually, I can see already the benefit of running the NVIDIA graphics because everything looks much sharper and crisper. Now, let's see if everything is configured properly. NVIDIA 34096, OpenGL, and we are good to go. Everything looks terrific, absolutely terrific. <coughs> now, Overall, Antics um, 16, this is Beta 5. I absolutely love this distribution. This along with MX-15, it's hard to pick which one that I prefer. MX-15 is a little bit more, I will say, polished. That's probably not a fair word, but um, it's, it, it does a little bit more for you out of the box. Let me give you one example, and, and, and if I can make a recommendation to the folks over at um, MEPIS or Ant Antics, um, USB drives should mount in your file manager automatically. That should not be something that the end user has to configure. If I click on the file manager, I have an, a USB drive plugged in right now. It's nowhere to be found. It 
Now there is a way to mount it, but you have to, currently you have to go into Control Center, go to Disk, click on Mount Connected Devices, bring up the list of your connected devices. So in my case, I have a lot of devices connected that I'd really like to be mounted. Some of these are internal hard drives that should be mounted. So all of the these mounted the, the, these devices should be mounted in my file manager automatically. But the one I'm most concerned with right now is SDE, which is a uh, USB flash drive. That should, as soon as I plug that drive in, it should mount. It's not doing that. There is a way to do it. I have to put in the device name and give it a mount point. So if I say SDE and I leave this media CD-ROM and click mount, as you can see, it's mounted. USB hard drives, those should all mount when connected. Um, it would make things a lot easier for the end user. Now, I understand that the end user for a distribution like Antics is not going to be a rookie, somebody who is um, just learning Linux. But I don't think that's a good argument for not mounting the USBs. Even an experienced user wants to have access to a USB drive once they plug it in. Shouldn't have to go through multiple steps. Linux can be difficult enough. Simple things like USB drives should be mounted automatically. And guys, the last uh, item that I said I'd go back to is the printer. Let's see if the printer configuration in Control Center, um, see if that works. So let's click on set up a printer. And we're going to click add and network printer find network printer wow okay so it found my brother network printer i guess the question is uh, whether or not it will be able to load drivers we will click on that and click forward so it looks like it stalled on searching for drivers. Oh, actually, it's offering to uh, it's offering to select a printer from the database. Let's click on brother, and it is not there. So it looks like I would have to load the drivers myself. Um, and I'll go ahead and do that, but it's a positive that it uh, it did was able to find the printer based on its uh, based on its IP address. So I'll go ahead and install that manually on my own as I usually do with no problems at all. Um, but getting back to the plus side, it's a fantastic distribution, which is why I took the time to go through. Uh, a lot of these issues, a lot of these configuration steps, because I believe it's worth it. Antics is terrific. We've got everything done. I think I've gone through everything that I wanted to cover. And so guys, uh, uh, thanks for your patience. I know this video is going on a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but I wanted to make sure that everything was covered so that if you wanna give uh, Antics 16 beta 5 a try you'll be able to you'll know your way around you can follow my roadmap so guys thanks for stopping by uh, please rate comment and subscribe again i have nothing but positive things to say about antics and mx15 uh, it's just that uh, may i suggest that uh, usb uh, flash drives need to get mounted when they're inserted 
it should not be a configuration option. So guys, uh, as I said, please rate, comment, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you soon. Take care.